before it's too late. But it all has to be done by the year 2025 to save this species from extinction, to make this species viable. They have to treat the fragmented golden lion tamarins population in Brazil and the global golden lion tamarin population in the zoos as one, as one clan or one tribe. This means ensuring that the widest breeding opportunities present themselves. At the same time, ensuring that related animals, brothers and sisters, aunts and uncles, don't breed with one another, for that would spell disaster. We're going to have to be doing what's called metapopulation management, moving individual animals with particular genetic backgrounds from one patch of forest to another. And from one zoo to another. Even if we have, even if we have enough habitat uh, and a large enough population size of gold lion tamarins by 2025, we're still going to have to manage them um, because we're going to have little genetically isolated populations. And it's going to mean moving individual animals every generation or so from one population um, to the other. So in the foreseeable future, probably for the next minimum 50 years, uh, until we can develop corridors between these forest patches so that the animals can move naturally between them, we're going to have to manage these wild animals. And it's almost it's almost like managing them in a zoo. But if they can't reach that goal by the year 2025? If, if, if in the year 2025 we didn't get this, we, we, we're going to give up because nothing more can be done to save this species. It is a clear objective and, it, and we are doing progress every year, every year, and let's see. It's a radical plan and one they say that has never been used before in the fight to save endangered species. And with the help of the Smithsonian Institute, the National Zoo and other zoos around the world, their plan may just work. It has to if these Mico Leon Dorado as they're called locally, are to survive. And while the golden lion tamarins that are supported by the National Zoo in Washington have the big bucks of the Smithsonian Institute to help them, in Brazil, the Rio de Janeiro Primate Center is not so lucky. This is Brazil's center for primatology. It was started more than 30 years ago by Eldemar Colombra Filho, who retired in the early 1990s. Today, it's run by El Cidis Pisionati. When the primate center was started, this hillside was barren. But thanks to the center's tireless hard work, it has been regrown, not to its former glory, but pretty close to it. Inside this fragment of regrowth Atlantic rainforest are many species of plants and animals fighting their way back from the brink. And inside these cages is the main focus of the center, saving the mini monkeys of Brazil. Well, the current state of the tamarind population now is better than we start to work with the primates. 25 years ago. This forest he has regrown forms part of the water catchment area for Rio de Janeiro. Well, the, the big problem uh, with, for this species is habitat, okay? We have been having some success in captive, but we have problem uh, how or where we can put these animals that we breeding captivity because no forest. They need forest. 
And it's the same for all these species. The main reason they are on the brink of extinction is because of the lack of habitat. There is nowhere for them to live. Humanity has destroyed it. Throughout southern Brazil, the rainforest has gone and there's nowhere to put them. So as the animals are bred up, they have to be kept in cages or shipped to zoos overseas. You see, Dr. Piscionati cannot stop breeding them. He mustn't stop breeding them. Because, as we have already said, their gene pool is so small, they have to be bred to keep the gene pool as wide as possible. And also to guard against some catastrophic disaster that may wipe out the remaining animals in the wild, like fire or disease. And with that in mind, many of these animals are sent to zoos around the world for safekeeping. And while some of Dr. Piscionati's animals are sent to zoos, others have been released back into the wild. He has supplied them to Denise Rambaldi's Poco de Antis project. But not anymore, because currently there's no more room left in her forest fragments. She has taken as many as the forest fragments can bear. But anyway, she only works with golden lion tamarins. There are plenty of other mini monkeys whose future is just as doubtful. There are the various bare-faced tamarins from the Amazon, like the pied bare-faced tamarin. This species has a tiny geological range and is being pushed out by the ever-growing human population. The golden rumped lion tamarin. This species was the victim of the pet trade. At one stage, it was thought 50% of the world's population had been smuggled out of Brazil to pet shops around the world. The black lion tamarin, which was thought to be extinct until it was rediscovered in 1970. Today, there's probably less than 1,000 in the wild. All of these primates are on the red list of critically endangered animals, just like the golden lion tamarin, all of whom face extinction. My staff is very small and uh, we work with a very um, huge difficulty, but uh, well, we look for the animals, for the nutrition, for management, for reproduction, pathologies, eh? and uh, this, this point of view, to the animals and we look for the habitat. We work in, in habitat, habitat restoration, replanting many different plants here and put some different animals here, birds or lizards, okay? And not only primates because we want to, to maintain the biodiversity of this region. <laughs> 